have one person watching <laughs> that's a good sign <laughs> good start hello hi random channel <laughs> how are you oh cool we have three people watching now thank you random channel thank you so much for watching <laughs> So today's stream is for me to let you guys know that this channel's not dead just yet. <laughs> I'm still here. And today we'll hopefully be talking about some flute tips. And maybe I can answer some of your questions if you have any. If you are tuning in just now, please comment where you're tuning in from so I know. Let me make sure I'm in tune first. <clears throat> oh, New Zealand. Hi, Jenny. Which city in New Zealand are you from? I used to live in Auckland. You're also from Auckland. Awesome. Okay. Um, how much did my flute cost? You can take a guess. And then I'll tell you later. Hi, Nocturne of the Sea. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. So, um... Well, hopefully we wait for more people to come in. I'll start talking about what I'm going to talk about today, which is improving tone, because that's a question I get a lot, actually. Christine Pradilla. Yes, actually, it's close to 20K. I think I got it for 18. Yeah, so it's a little bit expensive. <laughs> Okay, so um, actually, to be honest, I find it really hard to give, whoops, I find it really hard to give general flute advice because everyone's so different and you're all at different levels. So it can be really hard to give advice that fits you. But say you're looking to improve your tone and you're a beginner, most likely you're problem is that your sound is really airy so if you have an airy sound that usually means that your note isn't focused or your embouchure is not focused enough which is normal if you're a beginner because you're still learning how to use your embouchure and the muscles in your in your mouth which is pretty hard <laughs> to do because they're so tiny so <clears throat> um, so I do have a tone exercise I usually recommend my students to do, and it's just super easy. It's just like a long tone chromatic note exercise. 
And I usually start from um, a middle B because that's like a really easy note to start from. And then you go down. So like this. And just focus on your embouchure and trying to make it as focused as possible without tensing the outside. So it takes time to improve it. So it's better if you do it every day. The point is to do it every day so that it works over the long term. And then once you go down, you just do the same thing and go up. <clears throat> until the highest note you can play and then the main thing is that you have to play it for as long as you can until you run out of breath so this is really good for practicing extending your breath as well and you have to try and play it with a tone without vibrato because vibrato it masks everything. So if you have a bad tone, then you can't hear it as much if you have vibrato, which is why I recommend doing it without the vibrato. Okay. Bro, no. is it still possible to learn the flute even though I'm already in my late 20s? Yeah, definitely. I don't see why not. Um, and actually, I teach a lot of students and most of them are kids. So I think it's actually easier to learn when you're older. Um, it's easier to, for me at least to teach an adult compared to a kid. So definitely I'd encourage you to start if that's what you wanna do. Um, Kelvin Chen, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, I love you too. Okay, um, next tone exercise is kind of like a variation of the one I just did. So if you kind of get bored of that, you can do this one as well. So same thing, I start on middle B and then I go down. Actually, no, the higher B, not the middle B anymore.
and also keep going down until you get to the lowest note. <clears throat> okay, if you just joined um, or if you're still watching, let me know how much you practice every day. If you practice every day, I'm curious. <clears throat> Okay, um, Vedan Meta, one hour, really? Well, that's, that's pretty good. One hour is solid. And let me know what instrument you play as well. Um, Brandon Wright. Do I compose flute themes for people in their projects? Um, no, unfortunately, I'm really bad at composing, which is why I play covers. <laughs> I wish I was, but no, I don't. It's not my forte. So and thank you. I enjoy playing the Naruto covers as well. Okay, so my next um, tip for good tone is directed more at intermediate players. So if you've been playing flute for a while, um, this might be useful for you. So um, one thing about having good tone is that you want to be um, as open and as resonant as possible. So that means that you open up more space inside your mouth and you activate breathing through your nose as well. So this is something that doesn't really get talked about much and I only learned it from um, certain teachers, which is if you open up your nose, you're essentially unlocking all this dimension up here and that brings your tone um, to another level. So um, one exercise I really like to do is harmonics. So for example, if you don't know what that means, um, take your low C on your flute, the fingering, the lowest note, and then you play your low C first, and then you keep the fingering the same, but then you blow a little bit harder so that you hit the next note up. And then you blow a little bit harder again and you hit the next one up. So there's about four or five. Um, sometimes like even six, but I think you only really need to do the first four or five harmonics. And the point is to try and play it as open as possible without controlling the note. So it will sound really loud, but that's the whole point. Um, and I would suggest taking a big breath before you play the note. And when you take the breath, don't just breathe through your mouth. You have to breathe through your nose as well. And then that just opens up a lot more inside the moment you start breathing through your nose. So that's one I really like practicing if I feel like my tone's starting to get tight and I want to open it up. That's usually what I do. Um, are your man pant? 
You guys have some really interesting names. Um, my name is Tony, T-O-N-I. Nice to meet you. Um, Rhinificent, Mansalon, how do you make your high notes sound sweeter? That's a really good question. It's really hard. Um, actually, the, ex the harmonic exercise I suggested, I think, is a good place to start, even though it seems like it's not related, but it is because you're opening up your tone and making it more resonant. And then that way, your high notes are going to sound more open and resonant and the tone will improve. But it takes it takes time. I want to talk about for tone is um well this is part of my warm-up like process as well uh is I like to get the air moving by playing etudes um and I know etudes are supposed to be like technical pieces and you're supposed to play them like really fast but I don't like doing that I like to play my etudes really slow and focus on getting a full air through each note. And because etudes are usually fast moving, so there are lots of notes, so I feel like that helps me get my air moving. So I usually start with like a tone exercise of some sort, like one of the ones I just did, and then I'll follow with an etude, but slow practice in etude. So for example, I'll just do one now. If I can find a suitable one. Usually one that's not like all tongued because that's more about tonguing rather than working on air. So, okay, well, let's try this one. Can sight read this one?
sounds really broken, but um, I like practic practicing them super, super slow, just like that. And then maybe the second time I'll kind of play a little bit more in time. Um, <clears throat> how do I key? I do run out of breath all the time. <laughs> Especially these days because I used to play like five hours every day, but I definitely do not do that anymore. So um, something I've I found is that my breath is a lot a lot shorter these days, which is kind of sad, but that's just how it is, I guess. If you don't practice for a few years. Um so if you're wondering what etude that was, because it's kind of unrecognizable because I was playing it so slow, it was this book, Joshim. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but it's Anderson. And it was the first one in the book in C major. This one. Uh, Nocturne, low Cs. If you mean like the super low, like lower C, that note is really hard. So you have to learn to, um, it's completely different to playing any other notes on the flute because it's so low. So you, you have to make sure that your embouchure is a lot more open, wider, looser, in the beginning anyways. Um, and you kind of have to direct your air downwards a bit more, I think, if that makes sense. So you've got to think like towards your elbow a bit and start from like really gentle air because if you overdo it, it'll just crack and it won't come out. So almost like, like that, but a bit more gentle. Rather than thinking of like actively blowing air, you think of it more like you're sighing the air out. So sighing it out like that. And then eventually you'll learn to like feel where the edge of that note is and you can push it a little bit and focus your embouchure a little bit more to make it a bit more richer. <laughs> Something like that. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's kind of depressing because I was already, I'm already tired from playing that etude. <laughs> Sad days. So what happens when you don't practice people? Okay, another one of my holy grails is this book here. It's like a sweet Bible, kind of. <laughs> so um, this is like a daily exercise book by Trevor Y. If you don't know who Trevor Y is yet, um, I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, but honestly though, like check out Trevor Y if you haven't already yet, because he's written a lot of really good exercises for the float for lots of different things. So, um, for example, there's one I really like to do. I think it's called the Reichart exercise, if I can find it. <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay, yeah. Reichart exercise. I don't know why I said it like that. Just ignore me. <clears throat> also, just for any of you guys watching at home, don't don't play. Don't sit down while you're playing. I'm doing that right now because I'm streaming, but don't do that at home. 
for obvious reasons. <laughs> into a different key basically repeats this same little melody but in all of the different keys that's possible so it goes into minor next of the Travel Y complete daily exercises for the flute, if you're wondering what that was. <clears throat> um, your rink, do you have any tips for third and fourth octave notes? Do you mean playing them with a good tone? Mostly high A to high D. Um, yes, so basically all the tips I've been talking about up until now will help you a lot with your high register. So for example, a high A, oh, I'm thinking about a middle A. Yeah, harmonics, which is this thing. <laughs> to play the harmonic fingering and then play the corresponding actual note so for example I think that's a yeah it's a G and then try and match those two so they sound very similar Once I got that openness of that note, I just do a turn exercise going up from that note and then try and keep all the notes the same quality to the next. about it so notice every time I take a breath while doing that exercise I breathe through my nose that's really important yeah try that first and see how you go okay let me see <clears throat> is there any other exercise I can recommend Uh, 
Um, Rhinificent, is it possible to make my flute, flute sound louder? Um, if you focus on opening up your sound, you will, you will project and sound louder. <laughs> so yes, I know I'm repeating myself, but tone exercise, tone exercise is really important. <laughs> Do them every day. It's like stretching. <clears throat> So do them every day and then over the course of a few months, you should see some difference if you're doing them correctly. And actually, the flute's already a pretty loud instrument if you, you know, if you know how to play it, it's already really loud. At least that's the feedback I get from a lot of people, especially string players. So, okay, are there any other questions you want to ask? Can ask me anything. doesn't have to be fleet related, I guess. Mm. Let me see, are there any other Oh yeah. This one is not so much tone related, but um, it's good to think for fingering. So this book sometimes I use to help my fingering technique. Also by Trevor Y. Um, and this is book six. So I think this is advanced level. I'm sure there are, you know, lower level books if you're a beginner. I don't have them though. So I don't know what they're like. But to give you an idea, oh. hi, you know, let me know where you're tuning in from. And hi, Terry Berry. 12. Okay, so yeah, this this book looks really crazy because it's like very repetitive patterns, but that's that's what fingering is about. Hi Alestia, thank you for tuning in. the idea my most hated one um in this book or one of the my most hated ones i hate all of them but is the low c low c ones because you have to do this kind of thing which is really hard and i hate practicing it but it's yeah it's good good exercise so I actually don't recommend doing this for too long because sometimes you, you can, your hand can get a bit sore. Um, so yeah, but a little bit goes a long way, especially if you do it often. Alicia, 
I hope I'm saying your name right. You're from Australia too. That's awesome. Which city do you live in? Um, oh. Vidi, no worries. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. So if uh, if you guys don't know yet, I'm currently doing concerts pretty regularly. Um, so I play with two other people, um, a cellist and a harpist, and we've been doing Ghibli-themed concerts. Um, so that's in Brisbane. So anyone that's tuning in that's from Brisbane, you can get tickets now for... I think September, September concert is still selling. So come see me if you haven't already. Um, yeah. 10, ten tension kill gaming. I don't know how you're learning flute from me because I, I don't post a lot of tutorial videos. So kudos to you. <laughs> so yeah, on top of the Ghibli concerts, I think we're also doing a BTS one coming up. Hopefully that's gonna go through. Um, so any armies or BTS fans out there, you can keep an eye out for the tickets as well. Okay, Nocturne of the Sea. You're asking a really good question about playing in tune. So how do you how do you know if you're playing in tune or not? That's really hard to answer because most people ask how to play in tune. And then my answer is you have to know you're playing out of tune to be able to play in tune. So you have to, I guess the um the thing is you have to just start trying to open up your ears to be aware and keep listening all the time to see if you're playing in tune or not. Um, I would recommend to start tuning your flute every time you practice just as like as an exercise. So try that first. So for example, I have a tuner app, like it's free. Um, and most of the time I just use it on this setting. So you play a note and then if it turns green, it means you're in tune, you know, and if it's over here, it means you're sharp. If it's here, it means you're flat. But for you, I would put it on the other mode, which is like a tone generator, which means it will actually sound the note. I don't know if I can get it to work right now because I haven't used it before. Okay, I can't get it to work right now, but it will play the note out so you can actually hear it. And then you try and play yours and then just trial and error. Just start with trial, trial and error. Like push your head joint in and if it sounds worse, then you know you went the wrong way. <laughs> and then slowly over time, you'll start to be able to recognize that you're playing out of tune and then after another period of time, you'll start to recognize whether you're sharp or flat. So that's what I would do. <clears throat> I think that that's my tip there. Um, did I name my flute? Yeah, I guess, I guess so, but it's really original. <laughs> so my flute here is called Matsu, because it's Muramatsu. Yeah, I know it's not, it's not really that special. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty much the main tips I have for now for you guys. Um, like I said, it's really hard to give advice 
uh, over the internet because I don't know what you sound like. So these are like really general advice. So just try them out and see if it helps. Um, I do take students. So if you want more tailored advice, you can come find me for a lesson. I would love to teach you guys. So just to recap the tone exercise for beginners, chromatics, going down first. slower and then the other turn exercise a little bit more elaborate exercise and then I think that was the main thing main three the main three. Um, all right. I think I'll answer another one or two questions and then we can wrap up. Um, Alicia, do you have any tips on fingering lots of notes fast? That's another good question. To be honest, I don't think fast fingering is my strength, but I do have some tips to work on it. So fingering is all about learning patterns and it's a lot of it is muscle memory. So muscle memory means that you have to do it often um, over and over and over again, but correctly. So that's, that's the main thing. So a lot of people I find they'll play it over and over again, but then they're not really like thinking about it. So it actually makes it worse because you're not thinking about it and then you're learning the wrong muscle memory, if that makes sense. So, yeah, being aware of what you're doing is really important. <clears throat> so I would start with, you know, fingering exercises. Like if you're focused on like particular fingerings, like for example, your low register fingerings or... You know, sometimes like, for example, your C, C to Ds is usually going to be a kink in your scale. Then you can do like fingering exercises from this book. Um, again, I would suggest slow practice for fingering because no one can learn anything fast. So do it really slow so you can kind of drill it into your brain. And then once you've got it down, then you can start speeding it up. So let me see if I can do an example. Like if you're just doing a scale, actually, it's a good question because I forgot to mention this book. Yeah, this is another really good one for like just basic scale patterns and good for like warming up as well uh, which one should I do yeah like for example this one is nice and simple but it's really good for your fingering as well
it keeps going. So with uh, exercises like these, I would strongly recommend that you practice it with a metronome because anyone can finger really fast, but you have to do it accurately. That's the point. So metronome will help you stay in time and make sure that you're um, playing everything really evenly, which is really important. And then also, I'll show you here on this book. It's really good because it has the basic patterns and then it has different articulation variations so you can switch them up. So articulation is a really good way to practice fast passages, um, you know, to help you learn it and be able to learn the pattern and then play it really smoothly. So... Like, for example, the one I just did was just all slurred, so you can do other patterns as well, like two set, two tongue, three set, one tongue, and so on. There's like 10 variations here. any more questions do I have any tips for vibrato um I think I made a video or like a tutorial on how to do vibrato in three steps which is like a really simplified version um but firstly if you are a beginner please don't try vibrato <laughs> um and then secondly Vibrato shouldn't be something that covers up your bad tone. I don't mean it in a bad way, but um, it should be something that kind of molds together with your tone and it shouldn't be sitting like separately on top of your tone and you shouldn't do it over extensively. So if you think about it, vibrato is... Well, you can kind of explain it two ways. So it's the pitch going higher and then lower and then higher and then lower and then higher and then lower over and over. Um, and for flute, it, that kind of means that you give more, less air, more, less air, more, less air, but like really fast. So, um, <clears throat> you know, work on your basic tone first and then add your vibrato on the top and start with slow wobbles. <laughs> Don't just go from the very beginning because you'll probably sound like an opera singer, not in a bad way, but like you don't want to sound like that on the foot because it will sound really unnatural, if that makes sense. I don't, anyone that sings opera here, not trying to offend you. <laughs> but yeah, so... <laughs> Four 
pulses. Oh no, I did eight, I think. Eight pulses and actually it helps to do it with metronome as well. So again, you can make sure your vibrato is even and not uneven and then just speed it up. And the other tip, I guess, is that you want to do vibrato using your the air from your diaphragm or stomach. So you, you, not, you don't want to do vibrato using your throat because then you'll sound like a sheep. Um, which is not something you want, I hope. And I think my last tip for vibrato is I notice a lot of people when they do vibrato, it's too much of like, <clears throat> how do I say this? Like it's too sharp because you want equal amount of air going going higher and then going lower and going higher. You don't want to be like high all the time. So if you do that, your vibrato is going to sound really unsettled, I think. It'll be a bit like that rather than more grounded. That's my tip. I hope that helps. Okay, I think I can, or well, we can kind of wrap up now. So I hope my tips helped you guys um, with your flute journey. If you have any problems or questions, you can always comment under my videos and maybe I can make a tutorial. So let me know what you guys like. And I am still trying to release videos as often as I can. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Love you.